and you know we, he took on the form of a servant the lord jesus uh, to be with us to redeem us you know, this all knowing god and today we have this all knowing uh, god you know dwelling in us leading us so what an awesome privilege that all of us have right to to have him lead us to have him counsel us um such an awesome privilege right praise god okay so today uh, we're going to continue from where we uh, stopped last class um where we were looking at leading through time um we were, uh, last class we were looking at how as leaders uh, we need to be organized and we need to get certain certain things organized um whether it's our organization whether it's the company that we work with or you know particularly since we're talking about christian leadership um uh, to be to be organized in our ministry in our churches and in our um, you know uh, to 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 organize we said you know just basically very at a very fundamental level to to be able to put things in order to arrange things in order that's what it means so so we were looking at several things we said uh, you know about organizing our ministry organizing our people um organizing uh, the, the other two things that we're going to look at is organizing our time and organizing our finances right so organizing our time we see that uh, you know time is a resource right time is a resource it's uh, it seems to be uh, abundant but then we know that it's in short supply um and we need to use it it's a it's a it seems to be a non renewable resource right well the scripture talks about redeeming the time um uh walking circumspectly redeeming the time um let me just put up that verse uh, it's ephesians chapter 5 and verses 15 to 17 right um that it is Ephesians 5 verses verses 15 to 17 uh see then that you walk circumspectly so circumspectly meaning uh diligently carefully um considering the outcome of uh, you know how we are living or what we are doing um so saying walk circumspectly or live in such a manner uh diligently carefully uh, you know it's like where you're placing your feet um to walk so it's it's that picture that we have um not as fools but as wise redeeming the time because the days are evil therefore do not be unwise but understand what the day what the will of the lord is right so i'm uh, talking about our the way we live the way we make our choices and what choices we make and how we live our life uh, says walk circumspectly so we have this uh, great resource and as leaders uh we will do well to um to to spend our time well right to organize our time well and it will it will really help us to to be effective uh, in our in our choices in our decision making uh, and it will help us to be effective in our in our ministering and uh, you know uh, and in our ministry as well right a couple of uh, other verses some 90 and verse 12 Psalm 90 and verse 12 uh Psalm says so teach us to number our days that we may gain a heart of wisdom I right? teach us to number our days um so again you know teach us to count teach us to number teach us to know uh you know what time we have for maybe you know uh, this season or this action or this this uh, this particular task um you know all that Would, would fit into that right so teach us lord to number our days and it's talking about his lifetime um but we can apply it for you know everything else we can break it down for everything else so that can be our prayer lord teach us to number our days that we may gain a heart of wisdom and right? so it helps us okay this is something that we need to prioritize this is something that we need to um you know focus our attention on um and and we will do well to do that if we if we treat time as a, as a resource as spiritual you know as, as leaders christian leaders we would you know uh, so so then when we we would start things on time we would finish things on time we would because we we it's a resource 
right? And we would steward it well as uh, as leaders. Okay, so um, to to help us, uh, you know, uh, break or uh, you know, uh, put this this entire stretch of time into blocks uh, and plan things out. Well, we can have a annual calendar or a monthly calendar, a weekly calendar, and a, a daily to-do list. You know, that's just as general knowledge, and um, we can definitely use it in our ministries, right? If it's a, if it's a church, whether it's a, uh, whether it's a, any other form of ministry, a kind of ministry, and typically in a church, you know, where we have, uh, and if you are considering a church where we have 52 Sundays or 52 services, definitely, and then some additional services um, where uh, time for ministry and maybe uh, other opportunities to plan uh, outreaches or evangelism or missions and so on. So it would help us to, to, to actually factor all that in, right? And say, okay, um, these are, you know, uh, this year, 2022, we have these 12 months, we have these so many weeks, we have so many Sundays, um, we have so many opportunities, right? Um, so what are we going to do with, with, this, with, these, with this 365 days um, and, and put that in and plan that in, right? Um, so that will help us as leaders to uh, not only uh, us personally, but also others who are connected to the ministry and right? others who are a part of the ministry so uh, when we plan that out and when we communicate that um, it will help others to plan as well right so uh, some of us who are leading ministries who are you know hoping to even you know plant churches or be part of ministries you know this would really help us to have a, a annual calendar to have a, a monthly calendar yeah um Chris, you have a question. I can share. Ah, uh, yeah, yes, Pastor. So, I my question is actually um, a little bit um, around uh, planning as well as uh, organizing. Um, yeah. So, in the in uh, I mean, taking uh, TPC Church as as an example, uh, yeah. you, know, you will have uh, you know five locations here in, in Bangalore, and then you know you have all the outreach uh, churches. So I just wanted to add a little understand uh, uh, what were some of the um, uh, factors that would you know that contributed to you know to decide where those locations would be, and um, uh, you know what what were some of the uh, uh, you know thoughts that you know went through uh, or the uh, uh, you know um, plans as well as uh, you know trying to understand the actual um, geography or you know the location itself uh, what would be some what would be some of the factors for that i mean in a typical kind of a um uh, you know maybe in a corporate or a, you know in a business kind of uh, environment you know there would be something like you know where where would the demand be where would you know what what, what uh, is the market over there what what are some of the what are some of the advantages of, of having that that you know that branch or whatever you know, of that look of that company in in that particular location or in that particular city or whatever so just wanted to understand that yeah so in terms of uh, church locations in bangalore specifically um it was uh, I, I, i'm sure pastor ashish will be able to give more details on this but it was just to um, make sure that the city is covered that we have now we know that you know the uh, the city is uh, definitely expanded it's not it's not what it is uh, you know, 20 years back, it has definitely expanded in in vastly, uh, you know, uh, in, into certain areas. Especially what we thought was, you know, the periphery of the city is now expanded even more. So, uh, and people commute daily, right? So, with the with the general idea was that uh, we should be able to cover uh, the entire city. So we have the central, you know, business district, and then you have a, you know, a church in the center, and you have in the north, south, east, west. So, um, so the entire uh, you know the entire uh, uh, region or uh, the entire uh, geography of the city is covered to some extent. Now we know we can't do uh, so. So each um, 
uh, location would cater to that neighborhood and you know and the periphery uh, uh, of that location so so that was the uh, basic uh, fundamental uh, idea um, of these locations now when it comes to outreach churches the other uh, you know, the outreach churches of course um, i know just digressing a little bit but here but the outreach churches would were, were um, based on you know people who who are part of church, who are trained by church, who are part of the vision and ministry, uh, or even part of the congregation. Uh, but uh, they had a calling, they had a vision to go and plant a church. And uh, and uh, and that's how, you know, uh, I think all the outreach churches uh, that we have, uh, the people who are part of the congregation or part of the ministry, in some way, or some, there were some who, who worked uh, here in Bangalore and then went out and went back to their own city and town and then they had this calling vision to plant a church and then church uh, you know APC supported them uh, spiritually and to set things up and then they continue so so that was so that's how you know that came about um, yeah so hope that answers um, yes thank you yeah okay right so, um, so with regard to uh, yeah, coming back to time and and uh, how we can uh, actually plan things out. So it, so it it would really help us uh, to be more effective and not really be ad hoc, you know, in like uh, figuring out okay, now uh, okay, uh, now next Sunday what do I do? You know, the following Sunday what do I do? Um, so we can actually, uh, you know, the God. You know, God who actually helps us, who leads us moment by moment, is also the one who, who knows the end from the beginning, right? So we can trust Him to lead us in, uh, in big ch chunks of time as well, right? Uh, with regarding to, you know, regard to maybe five years, even ten years, and He can give us an overall picture. He can He can give us details, so um, so we can go ahead and uh, you know plan in that manner, and it would help us. It will give direction. It would help us to, uh, you know, um, uh, get ready with the, with resources, uh, get ready with um, uh, with people, what what we need to do, uh, with information that's required. Get ready with prayer support. You know, everything uh, will fall in place if we would do that. So we can have an annual calendar, a monthly calendar, and also uh, a daily list, right? Uh, a daily list. To, to chalk out, okay, these are some things that I need to do, that, that I need to complete uh, uh, today. Right? By the end of today, I need to complete these things, and uh, it really help us. You know? uh, so, so we might think, okay, my ministry is small, or my ministry is not grown that big. I don't have too many too many things to do, but uh, but it's good to start uh, when things are you know at that stage itself. You know, maybe it's it's a lot of uh, you know prayer that's going in. And maybe it's so we can, we can plan that as well, right? Put that as well uh, in in a day's schedule, right? And um, I'm sure there are there are a lot of tools. You know, I, I have on my phone a to do list, uh, and uh, just you know uh, put stuff there. Uh, you know, a, a, a to do list of all the tasks that needs to be done. So uh, I have it. I'm sure there are apps also. Uh, so um, I just wanted to share a very simple, uh, you know, uh, to do list template which I uh, you know, happened to read uh, some years back. I think maybe. Uh, I don't know, maybe six, seven years back, by this person uh, by name Bregman. Uh, I think his full name is Peter Bregman. So uh, he um, uh, talks about uh, you know 18 minutes uh, daily template. You know 18 minutes where you spend time on the template or, or the to-do list. Sorry, not the template. 18 minutes daily um, to-do list, and uh, it's quite interesting. So it starts with uh, step one is uh, you know you take five minutes to plan the entire day. Right, five minutes to plan whatever whatever things that you need to do, and you put it down in in your to do list. Okay, um, so the to do list itself is pretty interesting because uh, it breaks down uh, rather than putting everything in one list, he breaks it down according to key areas or key focus areas. Right, so. Um, let's say, for example, uh, let me just take my uh, my work, uh, my responsibilities here. <clears throat> you know, I uh, well, I I would have some key areas like uh, let's say worship ministry, 
Bible College. Um, then uh, member, uh, oh, sorry, uh, as associate pastor of uh, location, which is South. So those are three. Then I would have another key area like um, you know, marriage administration. Right? If people are going to get married, then you know, getting them scheduled to attend the marriage preparation course. Uh, you know, what? How is that happening? What is happening there? Then things connected with that. You know, so if people have completed the marriage preparation course, then bands have to be read in church and uh, meeting with them and uh, uh, planning their uh, their wedding service and so on. So those kind of things. Okay, so that's marriage. Then there could be, um, uh, let's say, some production related, you know, maybe some video production, uh, uh, album production, uh, related tasks. So let's say APC music. So that's that's one area. And um, there could be some shoots to be done, you know, maybe devotional shoots. And uh, so that's another. So, you know, six or seven areas uh, which we need to focus on. So the thing is, like, if we have one list, um, so sometimes, you know, things get, uh, things fall through the crack. You know, we, we might miss out, okay? So, but if you have a list which which uh, focuses on all the main, all the key areas, um, then it would help, you know. So it's like a mini to-do list within each area. Let me just share the screen and show you what uh, it could look like, right? Um, okay, so. Okay, so this is, um, what it could look like. So you have, you know, like six or seven boxes. Uh, it could be any number of boxes, depending on what are your focus areas. And each of this is, you know, you list down certain tasks there to be done. So um, maybe in 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 terms of worship, I, I might worship team. You know, I might have certain things. Okay, uh, plan a meeting with worship leaders or plan the next, uh, uh, you know, things to be done in the worship team meeting uh, when the entire team meets, or it could be uh, maybe a songwriting session, you know, um, uh, developing uh, a, a song. So uh, a, a meeting with the core team, so scheduling that. So all that would come under, you know, this particular box in, or inside this particular box and, uh, you know, another focus area and so on, right? So, uh, so this this is what it would look like. So, what he um, suggests is that you spend five minutes at the beginning of the day before you turn on any of your devices, or you know, look into any of your devices, and you know, you plan out the day, right? And uh, all these KRAs or key result areas or key focus areas, you you write down uh, all, all the tasks for the day, and um, so that's five minutes, and then. Uh, at the end of the day, you know, when you finish, uh, you review as well. You know, you review how did it go? Uh, did you waste time? Did you, you know, uh, was it useful? Uh, what could you could have done better? You know, just a reflection at the end of the day. So that's about 10 minutes. The eight minutes he, uh, is about, uh, you know, uh, at the end of every hour. Now, this I've not been able to do uh, very diligently, but uh, at the end of every hour, just take a minute to look at the list. Right? Uh, so it's let's say you're working nine to five, a typical you know work day. Um, I know you know all of us do more than that, but typically you know uh, at least eight hours, right? So uh, at the end of every hour, you put an alert and look at it. Look at the list for a minute. Okay, what are things that are still pending? Any focus area, anything that needs to be added, anything that needs to be taken off. So, you know, you do that. So that's 10 plus 8, 18 minutes, right? 18 minutes in a in a day. So Peter Bregman, quite useful. So I just, uh, you know, I try and do that. Um, it's helped, you know, uh, it's helped. Maybe not in the perfect way, you know, like how Peter, Eggman, Peter Bregman uh, describes it. Um, you know, but uh, but it's helped keep track of all the uh, all the focus areas, so everything kind of moves together, and you don't miss out on anything. Right. Uh, so, um, any other to any other way that uh, you know, I just want to hear from the group. You know, if if maybe you have a 
technique or you have a you know a special to-do list or app you, which you found useful and you try it out maybe you can share um so this is this is something i'll, I'll also put it on the uh, you know on the stream i'll just upload this document you can take a look at it and maybe you can try it out right okay uh any other uh, you know any other useful method we can you can share if you've tried it and you found that it's very useful anyone okay okay no one okay okay if you think of any you know you can you're, you're most welcome to put it on the stream saying okay okay this is something that i you know follow or this is something that i tried um you, know, you can put it out right um of course you know like all planning planning is exciting and working that plan is hard work uh but that's that's where we um that we need to be diligent about okay um, i see sam's message there's an analog journaling method called bullet journaling also a book by the same name okay for those of us who would like pen and paper right it's called bullet journaling is it okay i'll take a look at that okay journaling method okay so journaling um so sam if you've tried it could you, you want to explain it a little bit um right you know like you start the day with it or you know end the day or when do you do it yeah kind of um uh, so do you keep a journal and um i don't know how much you can see but it's uh, you, you can i mean because it's your own journal you can customize it anyway but um i don't know it's it's uh it's got so the, there's a whole book on it uh the author goes on to say how um you can have a journal but you can uh, really organize it in a way uh in a way where you have um all your important events listed um you can i don't know so every page can be um something that you want it to be like for example uh, i don't know if you can see so yeah. this is uh this is like my habit tracker so this is for the month of august uh so these are the dates and the days and probably these are the habits that i want to develop and um you know so uh, i just put dots uh, and every time i do it i cross it out uh every time i don't i just uh, circle it so 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 there, there's a habit tracker then there's this um like like you mentioned uh you know you can every day you can have a date and day and uh, the things to do you can just put it here um and uh, there's bullets so you so you put bullets in front of them and every time you do it you cross it out uh, every time you don't uh, you put an arrow um so 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 uh, initially when i plan it out i plan it with bullets and then as i do it uh, if i do it i cross it out uh, if i don't then i put an arrow so that i i need to do it tomorrow mm-hmm. um but yeah so it's like i don't have to open any devices i just open, start my day with uh, okay uh, with the journal um you can uh, and also what uh, the other things is uh, you can have dedicated pages uh to you know record verses so like i have i have mm. in between i have these um placeholders to uh write down any bible verses that uh, st- have stayed with me for the month and things like that so um, that way uh, it, it's 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 one thing but uh, it can it can be a placeholder for everything uh, from Wow. Uh, task management to uh, habit tracker to so the, there's this very interesting book um, and the book uh, is a fun read mm-hmm. and um, i read that book and then i got into this habit so it's been a year but it's been um, interesting and helpful uh, something wow. that i look forward to most days uh, wow. thank you very nice i can see some shopping list also so some good ways <laughs> <you know. laughs> yeah <laughs> right thank you thanks sam right anyone else um, you know, please feel free to just put it on the uh, stream as well right okay okay so um, yeah let's move on so the other thing uh, uh, other resource that we need to organize is of course our finances right um, so um, you know uh, the simple thing is uh, what comes in what goes out 
know, make a record of it. Uh, there'll be more details in other sessions, I'm sure. But, um, you know, in, in class like life skill or, um, and uh, which will be next semester, I think, or, or even in your workplace ministry, you know, what you're studying. Um, so, but it, it helps to, uh, it, it helps and, it, and it's very, very important. It's crucial, it's critical that uh, you know um, as leaders that we organize our finances that there's no lapse in this area because these are things which come under the scanner uh, you know especially if it's an organization and uh, um, you know uh, government and uh, you know uh, there there is always constant monitoring and and not only for the sake of you know um, that uh, that you're being monitored but it's also you know we are stewards of our finances and uh, and we'll do well to maintain that with integrity and make sure that uh, whatever comes in and whatever purpose for which it's allotted a lot of whatever finances come in whatever purpose for which they are allotted that they are spent accordingly and and tracked accordingly and whatever uh, legal uh, procedures that need to be followed in terms of uh, filing of taxes in terms of uh, you know even if there are uh, no taxes, maybe filing of returns. Um, everything um, would be would be done, right? So, um, so it, it it need not be something major, you know. Especially if things in a, are in a very uh, small uh, state right now, right? It can be a small notebook and where we maintain everything, right? What is the money that has come in, and what is the money that has been spent? And uh, for what purpose has it been spent? You know, it can start um, in that place, right? Uh, but uh, just for us to, uh, you know, for us to, um, just to, as, uh, as leaders, as Christian leaders, that we need to um, be about approach in this area. You know, this is something that, uh, that the enemy can use to you know, bring down the reputation uh, uh, and we cannot say oh sorry I did not know right uh, we can be sincere we can be sincerely wrong in certain things but uh, you know it doesn't help right so it, it's our duty we need to know what is the uh, especially if you are heading um, or if you are in a, any um, place of leadership um, we need to know Right, what what needs to be done and how it should be done and be careful about doing it. Okay, right. So um, just moving on, um, looking at another area when it comes to you know we said okay we are organizing uh, ministries, organizing people, organizing our time, uh, scheduling it well, organizing our finances. Right? So we looked at four things. So so when it comes to um, you know people and developing people um, you know as leaders we see that we are called to to raise up leaders right so uh, simply put the lord said when we commissioned us he commissioned us with this saying go make disciples right make disciples teaching them to observe all the things that I have you know, told you, I have showed you, I have taught you. So we are raising up others to follow Jesus. We are raising up uh, pillars which can hold, they can hold other responsibilities and, and, uh, and carry out the task, carry out the task of ministry. And as we, you know, as we organize ourselves, right, and do things in an organized manner, it goes without saying that we need to raise up uh, leaders. Right? We need to raise up uh, faithful, uh, committed, responsible people who can carry the weight of uh, the responsibilities. Right? We can carry the load of ministry uh, alongside us. And um, well, uh, you know, we talked about the vision. Uh, the bigger the vision, right? The the greater the task. Um, we, we realize that it cannot be just one person. It cannot be just you. It cannot be just a few. Um, it'll take more, more than um, just a few people to carry out that vision. And God actually gives a vision in, 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 in such a manner where, um, you know, others who, for whom the vision resonates, um, the Lord leads, right? The Lord is a, uh, you know, uh, 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 leading in their spirit, uh, a kind of uh, 
uh, a kind of uh, you know affirmation so that they can be connected a partner with uh, you know with their and different members placed in the body each member supplying strength receiving strength and causing the edification of the body to grow and right? grow so um that is how god plans things out so so it uh it which means it's the responsibility of us as leaders to raise up those uh, with the same you know maybe they have the heart for ministry they have the leadership leadership potential uh, to identify and to and to lift them up raise them up in the right manner okay so some practical guidelines we're going to look at that it's uh, of course it's not a very exhaustive list but we're going to look at that uh, look at some of these and uh, probably you might have uh, you know gone through this earlier as well if you've uh, you know studied the book uh, the house of god um so let me just share um share yeah okay so when it comes to uh, potential leaders right so certain things that we can do certain things that we can uh, look out for um as we as we do this intentionally right so so one of the, the 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 first the main thing that we need to see you know which is very very important is uh, is their personal life example which means their life and testimony okay. um you see when you when we read um, um i think it's acts chapter um yeah when we when we see um how the seven were chosen uh, it talks about uh, acts chapter 6 and it talks about um you know the 12 summoned the multitude and they said okay we need to do this these things are priority for us therefore you know we are going to choose uh, seven right of uh, of good reputation full of the holy spirit and wisdom whom we may appoint over this business right so for, firstly they they said okay good reputation and full of the holy spirit and wisdom okay so um in their own lives do they have a uh daily moment by moment uh, steady walk with god right is is are they living a godly life and is it tangible right it is it is well you can say okay my life is it's a it's a private thing you know my faith and everything is private well it's it's not it's personal but it's definitely not private it, there are certain things that we do um you know uh like seeking the lord in private they're seeking the lord in the thing but uh, you know in the secret place and spending time with him but it's not something that is private in the sense uh, you know it's closed to others but well it can inspire others and should the lord give an opportunity to share you know share about that so uh, we might say uh, we we're not closed you know to that it, it just comes out there's an overflow of that that people would see people would know um that um, you know just like how um the uh, the leaders in the church in in the synagogue sorry um uh, in the leaders in the temple they saw that they realized that these people these disciples had been with jesus right so it was something that is tangible something that cannot be hidden so so do uh, you know are the people that you are considering for leadership do they have a a good uh committed personal walk with god right um so uh, how is it evident it's evident in their choices it's evident in their speech it's evident in their uh, in the in their lifestyle how they spend their time you know everything it just comes out right so that is one thing to look for okay um secondly spiritual and emotional maturity so are they growing and are they mature right so that's an indicator are they met growing are they mature are they working at these areas spiritual and emotional maturity okay so which means that they have uh, certain things in place uh, certain disciplines in place when it comes to you know their spiritual life right so they know how to 
you know, how to do this for themselves and how to go and sit and they've made it uh, a part of their life to, to seek God and seek him uh, consistently daily um, and it's part of their life. So spiritually and emotionally as well, right? Emotionally, it's not up and down all the time or in the dumps, uh, you know, sometimes and, uh, you know, it, their life is not, you know, like a roller coaster uh, emotionally. Right. They've also, um, you know, um, they, well, they've fought some battles. They've brought down some strongholds in their own lives. Um, they, you know, we're not saying, you know, like this person should be perfect. Like, but at the same time, they have come the distance. They've walked the distance because they, now they're going to be taking care of others. So in the light of that, right, they're going to be overseeing some yeah, some you know, area of ministry. So in the light of that, to to know, you know, uh, to, to see that they are mature spiritually and mature emotionally as well, okay? And certain things like um, there is no need for, you know, approval, constant approval from people. There's no need for popularity. There's no need for, you know, for fame and... Uh, self-promotion and all those things you know, they've, um, they've died to that right? or um, you know they've put away those things right uh, so this is this is important again right uh, but if they are going to be constantly drawn for towards um, approval from people constantly drawn to be in the limelight drawn for self-promotion then uh, you know that's uh, i mean that's a red flag Right? That's an area that that person needs to work on and and really overcome uh, before being given leadership, uh, uh, you know, responsibilities. Right. So those are some uh, a couple of things to look at. Thirdly, um, and very importantly, alignment to the vision. Okay. So now, okay, as an organization, maybe as a ministry, as a church, you know, uh, God has given a, a vision. Right. God has given you a vision and uh, and you're just working towards that and it's something that's um, you know that's that's um, that you've spent time with and it's part of you and so on right so so everything is going towards that um, so when we when when others come and uh, you know others are raised up as leaders one thing to to find out, is are people aligned towards that vision, you know, or in line with that vision? Uh, is it something that's that's also exciting them, right? Uh, or is it, is there something else in their heart? Okay, uh, I know this is there, but uh, I don't want this to be the main thing. You know, I uh, my main thing is something else. Uh, this. This is fine. I can tolerate it. I can endure it. But then there's something else in my heart. If it's, you know, which is perfectly okay, right? which is perfectly fine. Maybe God wants them to do something else, right? And we need to respect that, and uh, and and just respect that, and uh, and say, okay, yeah, God has called you, and maybe this is not the right place, or definitely this is not the right place because that is not the vision of this ministry or this church or this organization, you know, God has given you something and, uh, you know, go and please go out, go and pursue that and do that wholeheartedly. Right. So, so the vision direction, the teaching, the statement of faith, uh, you know, if it's a local church or if it's, uh, you know, any other ministry organization, you know, what is the, what, what is that thing? You know, what are the values? What is the culture? What is the emphasis? What is that main thing that uh, the, the ministry or the organization is going after or pursuing. You know, that's that's what God has graced, God has gifted, God has called. Therefore, for the body to move, you know, you can't be pulling in different directions, right? So, um, well, alignment to the cause, alignment to the vision uh, is again important. Okay, right. Okay, so, uh, you know, these are, uh, three very important things, the, the top three. Uh, it's not in any order, but then, you know, when you look at this, you see that um, these are important. And this would, we would know uh, over a period of time. 
time, over a period of time, um, talking to them, hearing their heart, um, watching them, uh, observing what they, how they've been serving uh, and how they're living their life is how we would come to know or, or getting them to share uh, about you know what um, what their purpose is and all that uh, is what is uh, is one way by which we would get to know we would understand right so it's 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 not going to be a, a one off uh, thing you know it's not going to happen in a day it's going to take some time for us to know and understand and observe this right so um, so the the thing that will be very very visible is maybe the gifting and the skills, you know, these are things that just come up, right? These are put on display, right? Well, I, I can do this. I, I can take care of this need. And, uh, and, you know, I have this gifting, you know, so I can use this. So these are things which are very, very visible, tangible. So usually what happens is, you know, we are drawn towards that. Hey, I have a need here. Right? I have this need in the church, in the ministry, there is this need. Um, so we, we immediately try to, you know, um, get that person in and, you know, plug that need, take care of that need. Um, yes, that is important. But what will keep them going in the long run is if they are aligned to the vision, you know, if they are people spiritually and emotionally mature and you know if they have uh, the things in place when it comes to you know, personal life testimony and they're living a, a life that's an example to others so their personal work with God so if these three are not there then it's going to be difficult right uh, well that need would be met uh, and it's be a temporary fix then then after a point you would we would have problems coming up because of the other three things not in place being not in place right so uh, it's very important okay uh, fourthly uh, responsible you know is that person responsible is that person reliable right so um, someone who, whom you can depend on someone who is who takes their job seriously you know who takes uh, um, some amount of uh, you know, uh, they come to it with a sense of seriousness. There's a commitment and uh, uh, it's something that is not trivial, right? It's not something that's, uh, um, you know, uh, they they look at it as, uh, as something that needs to be done, something that needs to be done well, their role in the, you know, if it's an organization, their role in the organization uh, and whatever tasks they are, they've been responsible to do it and um, they put in that effort they do it excellently and they they look at it as something that needs to be completed and so on uh, reliable you know is that person dependable can you give the task and uh, know that they will get it done okay uh, will they will they put in their best will they take go that extra mile and and of course you know these are things that can be developed as well we know that, you know, uh, but there needs to be a certain measure of these traits. Um, and maybe they have challenges, you know, some challenges, maybe personality wise, temperamentally, maybe skill wise, you know, um, these can be addressed. Um, but these qualities need to be there in a certain measure before they can be given that leadership position, right? Or maybe, you know, these, these things can be built in them. Uh, uh, they, they can grow into these things and then the added weight of uh, leadership can be placed, right? So they need to be responsible, reliable, and, uh, you know, a, a quality uh, of excellence in whatever they do. We, we looked at those uh, couple of verses, um, I think uh, Colossians 3 and um, um, Colossians 3, 17, whatever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Verse 20, 23, and whatever you do, do in heartily as to the Lord and not to, not to men. Okay. Um, if you look at verse 22, it talks about bond servants and, um, you know, uh, it says obey in all things 
your masters according to the flesh, not with eye service as men pleasers, but in sincerity of heart, fearing God. So if someone has that perspective about the things that they need to do or things that they need to get done, saying that, okay, I'm, I'm not here to please this person who has given me the responsibility, but I know uh, that it's ultimately God who gets the glory and I'm pleasing him, right? And, uh, you know, the thing is, the task could be, you know, in the sense, it could be upfront, you know, spiritual, in the sense, it could be spiritual ministry. Or it could be, it need not be, you know, spiritual, quote unquote, but it can be some certain tasks which are administrative uh, in, in nature, but which aid the spiritual, right? aid the spiritual ministry, which support um, uh, the spiritual ministry. But whatever it is, right, it's because it is not, you know, overtly spiritual, if we are going to slack off, you're not going to be diligent, then, then there, there is a problem, right? So this quality of excellence is having this perspective. I'm doing it unto God and I'm not doing it to please man. You know, whatever task I'm doing, it's ultimately, it is, it, it is for him. And right? if I have that perspective, if the person has that um, revelation and understanding, then it's good, right? So a quality of excellence, um, they'll be able to bring in, right? Okay, so we'll stop here. We'll take a break and come back in 10 minutes. Thank you.